the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. You want to be ineffective. Yes. You want to be ineffective. You really are. So say, the one thing that I realized about Satan is that Satan is detached from eternity and God. Yes, he sir. He has no love in him. Come on. Him and his heart are just totally separated from God, which means there is no love in him. Come on. So the one thing that they're going to be affected by is the love of God. Yes, if you sir. don't have that, you're playing in the same arena they in. Come on. You can't go in there with a loyalty and, 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 and all these high-minded ideas. And I say high-minded because we can come up with a whole bunch of, uh, of words and adjectives and stuff as why we are motivated to do one thing or another, you know, devotion, loyalty, you uh -huh. know, or respect, or honor. But if any of those are devoid of that single element of love, it's just waste. It's, 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 it's sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Exactly. It's still edifying, but it's not going to give. It, it's not going to be life in anybody else. Come on. It's a hard place to come to because it really puts you on a personal note yeah. on the hot seat. Yeah. You know where you're at when you start telling other people. Why exactly. are you witnessing to this person? <laughs> you know why are you in this guy's face? If you don't love him, what do you expect to get out of it? Exactly. No matter how that, no matter how this thing is manifesting itself, uh -huh. if you're not there to edify up, you up and strengthen them to bring them up and out of whatever it is that's binding them. Yes, sir. And why are you in their life? Why are you in their life? And you know, that's why I said it when, when they go back to this again and, and see what a, a, a bishop had to say. I, that CIT, we didn't got to do scriptures yet on it, but <laughs> the bottom line is, is I was speaking to bed. Can you hear? I can hear you. Yeah, no. I, I don't know why it went bad for some reason for a second. Yeah, okay. I don't know. <laughs> but Bishop, the, the, the thing is, I'm sitting there on that simple theme that really those, those embarrassed, bearers, endures, believers, hope all things and never fail. It's, it seems like the motivation for a lot. <laughs> so elder since, since you was just visiting jesus did he tell you anything <laughs> yeah. i did now you tell me that no. <laughs> That brother was in the spirit world for real. <laughs> hey, yeah, no, you didn't say that. <laughs> and so that's it. I was about 
Because, you know, he, he owes it. He didn't go in here Thursday, but he said uh, he has a new neighbor. Okay. <laughs> Y'all heard my new neighbor. <laughs> And we wanted to hit him. Yeah, we did. we heard his neighbors too. <laughs> that was funny, man. That was funny. <laughs> we drove up to his house, uh, Brother Addison, and we heard some background, some person in the background. <laughs> and go, and is that you? <laughs> and we were talking about the Good Samaritan, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said, that's my neighbor, but he, <laughs> he said, literally. <laughs> the timing couldn't have been better on that one, but that was a funny thing. <laughs> on top of that, he was ready to say, he was ready, he's ready to leave. <laughs> he, hey, look, whatever. He wanted to go on the other side of the road. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> so, Bitch, what did you guys say? <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Okay, so. Let me see the CRT again. One second. Here we go. Oh, let me get this out of the way, sorry. I am. No, I'm going to go. You see it? No, you don't have it up. I don't have it up? No. Here, the wrong screen. See it now? Yeah. Here's the, that's, that's the beginning of the slide, bitch. All right, so. <clears throat> uh, in, the, in the research, and I don't know if you guys recognize, but <clears throat> a bit off a very serious chunk of scripture. Uh-huh. That you have decided to try uh -huh. to deal with in one piece. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. So, so my question is, so why is Paul even talking about love? <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> why is he talking about love? That's you very, know, very that valid question. You know, you have to go why, through. Why is he even taking the time to give you a whole section on love? Why? I know that with some of the scriptures in the past, he talked about the things he'd been through. But that's a good point. Let me see what that's a that's a real good question. Why is he talking about it? So because so, he, so, so, he's, so so before I can write my CRT, the first thing I gotta do is answer that question. Or at least I wanna know. Why is he talking about love? Because he's 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 basing it off of spiritual gifts. Yeah. The, the chapter before that, right? Yeah. Okay. And why does he need to sing a lot love in his discussion about spiritual gifts? I, I think on a, on, just from reading Paul's writing and looking at his, his behavior prior to his conversion, Paul was a man that was um, was kind of a, driven by something other than love. Uh, not the love of God that he changed him after conversion anyway. Maybe love of, of nation, love of you know, religion. He was he was motivated by something other than what he came to know after he was converted. 
Are you and I about think what he was people? doing was basically a self-analysis. I think Paul was talking about Paul a lot in this because he knew what had driven him before. Are you he talking? Was an about, expert. Are you speaking from your CIT? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. My my CIT is almost just all encompassing because uh, you can't get around it. And that's basically what it's saying is that our belief system is based on this. The foundation of our belief system is. Can you put yours up? You have I yours can't. put it up? Yeah. You gonna share it, Al? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find that little book. One second, I got it. Let me make sure I got it set up for you. <clears throat> there you go. Now you can do it, Sam. Because, see, I'm not even at the point where I can write a CRT. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> because, because to get to the place where you can write a CRT, there are a lot of questions you're going to have to answer. Well, bitch, I do want to let you know. For example, you absolutely must, in my opinion, this that's my opinion now. Don't, don't take this as this is just my opinion. Uh you absolutely must go back and read chapter 12. Yeah, 12. Yeah, but I have mm -hmm. the button right. And, and you and think about it, Elder, uh Bishop. He also had uh, the, chapter chapter before, chapter. the chapter before that was the Lord's Supper. Where he was also talking about they had the vision among themselves. Uh, they didn't, yes. they didn't uh, wait for one another in, the, in oneness. So those two, matter of fact, those two chapters before really probably pushed him into the fact that guys, you guys really not operating at all. Now, good. Yeah. very good. Because here's what I think you have to understand why this why this chapter is in there. I really believe that what, like anything else, whatever you have believers doing together in, in, a, in a covenant relationship of oneness, uh -huh. you always have to worry about ranking. Mm. Because these gifts are actually people. Yeah. These are not objects floating around out in the air. These are gifted people. Mm -hmm. And whenever you have people in a relationship, even in the body of Christ, you have to be concerned about the danger of division. Mm -hmm. mm. When you go back to chapter 11, yeah. chapter 11 is dealing with division. Right. It has found its way into the communion service. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that, that kind of, uh, in a sense, it, it shows a specific application, but it's still, still the same concept. The way they're going to get past the division is, is by love. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it, so when we, when we think, think in terms of the foundation, the, whole, the thing that holds the whole system together is love itself. And which is really strange because, again, when we get back to that point, which is God is love. So who's holding it together? God is. God. Who, who, well, who is God? God is love. Yeah. Uh, love covers the most two sins. Those who are spiritual, bad, and firm, you're weak. You, why? Because you love them. Yeah. You love your enemies, bless them, and curse you. So, so, so what we saw was it was a dissemination of power from bottom up. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, was, it was edifying. That's the thing that caused our system, our government, to be everlasting. Okay. It's, a, it's a way that we distribute the power in accordance with love itself. So... In your research, you see, if you did, see, that's what I'm saying, if you've done your homework, you would have seen that in chapter 12, that the whole focus is, look, man, we are talking about one many-membered body. Now, his press is to get you to see, though we got all these members, all these different gifted people, the press is for it's something that he talks about in, in, in other places to keep the unity of the spirit, the oneness of the spirit and the bond of peace. Yes. So that you go to chapter 12, you're going to hear him talk one, 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 one. He's hammering one. Yeah, but you can stop those, you know, uh, sharing for a second so you can show that. 
Uh, so you're here then? Yeah. Place, he says, I'm trying to find it. Let me but Ah, uh, in verse 25 of chapter 12. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to bring it up to you. And that's a good point. The, 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 that's, that's the first time we even talk about what you say. Let, let's go through the wise it being said. <laughs> I, you know, when we do the CIT, we, we kind of like was trying to stick within the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the that, that body of the text. But it's good point to say, why is he doing it? He said 12, 25. That body of text is inside of a larger context. Yeah. So you can't just go in and pull out a body of text. So it might it might be one piece. It is also part of a larger context. Right. So you're kind of obligated to always, when you look at uh, when you choose a scripture, you got to look and see how it fits in, where it fits in. Yeah. It is it is it is uh, the, <laughs> the, the Germans say it's it sits in Laban. Uh -huh. it, well, why the text sits where it sits? So, so he didn't start. He didn't. He didn't begin a conversation on love just out of the wild blue. He begun this conversation because he's trying to show you how the gift of love, yes sir, is purpose and place in the spiritual gifts, and so that there'll be no schism in the business. That's what verse twenty five says. You see, verse twenty five says that there should be no schism. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No divisions. No, no Paulinian, no, no, uh, pa uh Paulinian, uh, no Pedians, <laughs> no, uh, not a Paul, not a Paulo, not a, not a McCann, not a Taylor. There'll be none of them, but of Christ. Wow. But, and so when we're looking at 12, we're, we're seeing that he's using, he's, he's pointing out love as a resolve to any schisms that would occur in the body of Christ. Uh -huh. So that's part of that CIT, right? Yeah. That's but the CIT, if, if we decide on what the CIT is, if, 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 like if we go for the foundation of our belief system, yeah. love is the foundation of our belief system, we know we can apply it there to resolve any schisms. Can we look at other aspects of our belief system and see how it applies there and still maintain continuity of the, uh, I guess, the approach to, to, to the analysis? Yeah. Will the CIT fit in any other aspect aside from or in addition to continuity or, 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 or unity. They should all work together. They, they yeah. should they should intertwine because this is all talking about the kingdom of God here yeah. on earth. Yeah. 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 If you get the CIT right, when you move to other spiritual truth, that CIT will fit right in. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the test of it would be in addition to looking at the schism that was occurring in the, in the resolve of those, is to look at other things, other situations that occurred that were discussed anyway. In the scripture, where love was the solution again, or is the solution. So if we go through the, the need for salvation, the need for salvation observed by God, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son so we're seeing the application of love in salvation we're seeing the application of love in uh in unity where else do we see it you see it in the beginning thing. you see it in the entire bible yeah uh, you you see it in the creation of this world you see it uh <laughs> in the fall of mankind the love that god showed toward adam and eve you see it in the love that he showed toward toward Cain, yeah, and, yeah. and Abel, and, and and so on and forth, so forth, it's mm. it's the central theme throughout the entire Bible. You know, it's kind of strange because I've never thought about that. I I did not know why God did not punish Cain, and when He said, "If anybody kills you, then I'm going to take vengeance on them like seven times, or something like that," right? Uh -huh. That didn't make sense to me. It's like, why would he do that? This guy just going to murder somebody. And now he's going to take vengeance on somebody that murders him. The only explanation that would have to be love. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, it had to be crazy, right? Okay, so if you pick up at verse 25, and then you read all the way down to verse 31, yeah. you'll get 
desist in which he's trying to uh, to clear up some things. 